All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. It's Maddie here from Chill TCG. Today, or in this video, we're going to be taking a look at uh, personally, probably my favorite card uh, to be coming out of the new set. Uh, Chilling Rain, the new Pokemon TCG expansion, and that is, of course, uh, Sandaconda V Max. Uh, it's a spread deck, uh, and uh, spread decks are really you know hard to come by these days. Uh, they're typically not very viable. Sandaconda probably isn't going to be a super high tier deck, at least not till after rotation, uh, where, in my opinion, it could be very viable. Uh, but the deck has a lot going for it. It's extremely fun. Um, it's definitely not something that I would bring to try to win a Chill Series, say Chill Series number 36 coming up this Wednesday. But uh, it is a deck that I would definitely play on the ladder and have a lot of fun with. Um, now, one thing I do want to mention with Sandaconda before we get into it, um, it is very much heavily walled by Bench Barrier Mew. That's one card that is just going to be absolutely detrimental uh, to Sandaconda. So since this card is probably going to be super uh, super popular, uh, very you know heavily played, especially with Urshifu being so common right now, um, it, it just makes sense that Sandaconda probably isn't going to be super viable, but the deck is super cool. It's super, super fun, um, and uh, we're going to get into it right now. So Sandaconda VMAX. 320 HP fighting type Pokemon, weak to grass, uh, no resistance, and it is, uh, of course, has a retreat cost of three. It's got two attacks there, Sand Pulse, 60 damage is the first one for one fighting energy. Uh, it does uh, 60 damage, but it also does 20 damage to each of your opponent's benched Pokemon. Very cool spread ability. Uh, we're going to pair this uh, this Pokemon up with things like Telescopic Sight, which is going to increase the bench damage that we do by 30 to V and GX Pokemon. So this means that we're going to be able to hit for 60, and then against a lot of decks, things like ADP, Things like Eternatus, uh, Shadow Rider, Calyrex, decks that are running primarily V and GX Pokemon. We're going to be able to hit the active for 60 and the bench for 50 consistently every turn for, of course, just one fighting energy. Very, very, very good. Uh, not only that, the good thing about this card is that uh, we can attack for one energy, spread all that damage, and if we get hit, we can play Cheryl, which is going to heal all damage from our Sandaconda VMAX, but it discards us, uh, all, it actually heals all damage from all of our Sandaconda VMAXs. Um, and of course, uh, you discard all the energies of those Pokemon when you do that. However, our Santa Condas, most of the time, are probably just going to have one energy. So it's not a big deal, really, at all. Uh, Cheryl goes very, very well uh, with Santa Conda. V Max. We also have a second attack. Uh, G Max Cyclone does 180 damage for two fighting and a colorless, and you move any amount of energy from this Pokemon to your other Pokemon any way that you would like, uh, which is actually really good. It's really useful. If we know our Sandaconda is going to go down, we can conserve that energies um, and next turn also hit for 180 on another Sandaconda, or we can move those energies to something like Galarian Zapdos V to hit for 170 um, on, a, on a two prize Pokemon. So it's a very nice kind of lead in. And Galarian Zapdos was a very hyped up card. Very good. It's mainly in here to make the Eternatus matchup that much easier. Uh, but kind of doing 170 can fix the damage a lot of times. Um, and against uh, some cards um, or some decks, uh, we don't even need all three energies to attack with Galarian Zapdos V. Uh, the ability there, Fighting Instinct. Uh, this Pokemon's attack cost costs one less colorless energy for each of your opponent's Pokemon V in play. Uh, so if we're going against things like Eternatus, uh, we're going to be just attacking for one energy. Uh, but in a lot of times, and a lot of decks right now in our format, our opponent's boards are going to be filled with V Pokemon. Uh, so Zapdos V is going to be able to attack for relatively cheap. And this attack does 170 damage, um, but before doing damage, you discard a special energy from your opponent's active Pokemon. Discarding before is actually pretty good uh, because it uh, negates things like um, stone energy for going against uh, stone energy or horror energy. Uh, those effects don't actually apply uh, because they get removed before we attack, which is pretty important to note. Um, so that's uh, the lineup. We're running one of those for uh, a 4-3 lineup of Santa Conda. Now, moving on to our draw engine. Uh, pretty interesting, actually. We are running the Shady Dealings, uh, Sobble, Drizzile, and Inteleon. However, with this deck, instead of running three of the Shady Dealings Inteleons, we're just running one, but we have two of the Quick Shooting, the new Rapid Strike Inteleon, uh, which is actually really good because we can place two damage counters every turn uh, to one of our opponent's Pokemon. And this is going to be good just to fix some math. Uh, realistically, if we hit the bench for 60, 60, that's 120. A lot of Pokemon, um, you know, are going to require some extra damage to kind of be KO'd. Um, and that's where this quick shooting Inteleon really comes in handy. Um, but um, it's also good because we can go ahead and run, uh, we run a couple scoop up nets. So, you know, if we don't want to, you know, just kind of commit for the quick shooting, we can kind of reuse our shady dealings Inteleon as well and just re evolve to, you know, use those shady dealings abilities more than once. Um, and if you don't know shady dealings, when you evolve the Pokemon, uh, you get to search your deck for a trainer card. Uh, on Drizzile, if it's uh, the Inteleon one, you search your deck for two trainer cards. It's actually really good for those turns where we're really looking to find Cheryl uh, because that's going to be our main out uh, to continue living throughout the game, right? Uh, we're only running two Cheryls in our deck. Uh, realistically, if we get set up early, we shouldn't have to Cheryl more than twice. Um, and that should be enough for us to consistently uh, at least um, do enough damage to completely wipe their board and take all the prize cards that we need. 
We are running a Mew in the deck. Uh, this is the card that walls this deck, uh, but it's also going to be really good in other matchups and specifically against things like Urshifu or really any other deck. I uh, like that new Zorora um, Blaziken deck, which also does bench damage. Mew is just a phenomenal card right now. Uh, by principle, kind of the reason why Sandaconda isn't going to be super viable, uh, realistically, in a tournament setting at least, uh, but uh, still a super fun deck none the nonetheless. This protects our bench Pokemon from taking damage. Um, what up? Uh, what do we got next? Okay, so just moving through the trainers, we have one spinner. That's just to consistently get some energies in our hand because we like to kind of pile those up uh, so we can kind of play them turn after turn. Uh, we have three evolution incense, two level balls, four quick balls, um, and that's kind of our ball search for the deck. And we also have one capture energy. A lot of Pokemon search in here because, again, we do want to kind of shuffle through the Sobble, Drizzile, and Inteleons as quickly as possible while also setting up our Sandicon V and V Max. So that's the reason why we have so much Pokemon search. Um, one ordinary rod. The rod is interesting. Uh, this is mainly so that we can kind of reuse uh, things like Drizzile or Inteleon if we do happen to prize some. Uh, if we only have access to maybe one Drizzile or two Drizziles and one gets KO'd or we discard one, it's just nice to have Ordinary Rod to get those cards back out of our deck. Ordinary Rod is actually exceptionally good right now against ADP because of that Echoing Horn ability, uh, which of course uh, puts a basic Pokemon from your discard pile under your bench, which is going to be super good for ADP uh, to take that last few prize cards for a game. Uh, with uh, Ordinary Rod, we're going to be able to shuffle those Pokemon from our discard pile back into our deck, which nullifies Echoing Horn, so that's just one or another reason to run Ordinary Rod. We have, run, uh, we have one reset that stamp in here as well uh, we're kind of a setup deck kind of a slow deck so after we get KO'd once uh, we like to stamp him to two or three and then hope that we can kind of settle in and kind of build up the board state that we need to continue through the rest of the game uh, scoop up nuts like I said we're running the new path to the peak we have three of these this shuts off or two of these uh, this shuts off all um, abilities of Pokemon with a rule box which includes things like prism stars Pokemon V or GX um, this works well for us uh, realistically um, because of course uh, we don't really have, Sandaconda VMAX doesn't have abilities. Uh, now, it does go against Galarian Zapdos V, uh, but in matchups, uh, I guess, where we're, you know, running Path to the Peak, we don't really necessarily need to run Zapdos V. So it's just kind of there uh, to the point where, uh, again, if we have Path to the Peak in play, we're just not going to play our one of Zapdos, and that's just kind of all it is. Um, and uh, two bosses orders. Again, self-explanatory why we have boss in the deck. Uh, two Cheryls, like I said, very good. And then we have a Goose Mahala and a Mallow Lana. Goose Mahala is going to be good because we can find our Telescopic Sight, our Stone Energies, and our Path to the Peaks. Three cards that are going to be really useful in a whole lot of matchups. And then Mallow Lana, just another healing option against decks maybe like Urshifu VMAX uh, that don't do a whole lot of damage. Uh, Mallow Lana might be actually preferable over something like Cheryl. Uh, so it's just another healing option, but it's also a switch card in one. So in my opinion, uh, running two Cheryls and one Malolana was better than running three Cheryls or three Malolanas, in my opinion. Uh, but again, you know, you guys uh, can kind of change that around however you would like, realistically. Uh, we have three Marnies, four Research, just draw support. Uh, two Telescopic Sights, that's going to increase our bench damage. And then we have a Capture Energy just to kind of consistently get those Sobbles down, uh, or more consistently get the Sobbles down. Now, interesting and important to note, Sandaconda VMAX needs that one fighting energy to use the Sand Blast attack, uh, but it does have one colorless it's an colorless and its attack cost, so, you know, mid, early game, we can kind of attach that without feeling too, too bad, especially if we go first, uh, so that's something uh, we definitely want to keep in mind. Um, going second, though, is probably their best option, so that you, get, you can Goose Mahela, capture, get the Sobble down on board, because we're not attacking on our first turn going second, but our second turn... Uh, we are going to be uh, starting to attack, right? So that's kind of the best strategy. And then we have six basic fighting energies and four stone energies. The stone is really good. It uh, helps with the math a lot. We have 320 HP. If we get a couple stone energies on our guy, um, you know, we uh, are taking 40 less damage from attacks while also having the healing option. So it just makes a lot of sense to run stone in Sandaconda. All right, guys, that's going to be the deck list. Uh, kind of a long explanation. I do apologize. I'm going to put his timestamp below. So if you guys are interested or if you guys want to, of course, I just skip to the gameplay. Go right ahead. Um, we're going to go ahead and play my boy, Vaughn, uh, who is a great player, and he's playing ADP. Uh, so it should be a very interesting matchup, ADP Zacian. But uh, let's get into the gameplay, guys. Hope you guys like the deck. And uh, yeah, let's have some fun. All right. <laughs> let's get into it, guys. Going to be an interesting one, 100%. Uh, Santa Conda, you know, what are you going to do? Santa Conda is a very interesting deck. Uh... You know, it's. I wouldn't suggest playing it to tournament right now, to be 100% honest with you, just because Mew is still uh, around, and that, that is going to make your matchup a lot harder a lot of times. Uh, but uh, we're playing my man Vaughn here, and he is, of course, I think he's playing ADP Zacian, the new uh, upgraded, uh, improved, updated version of ADP with Echoing Horde and all that good stuff. Uh, the deck is absolutely insane. ADP Zacian might just actually be our best deck in the format right now. It's kind of hard to say, uh, to be 100% honest. But you know what? 
I'm excited. I love Santa Con. I love spread decks. Uh, and I'm, I'm just, you know, I'm happy that uh, this card exists. And uh, we're going to try to see if we can get, uh, you know, a nice cheeky win out of it. Uh, again, I kind of want to cover, you know, the, the first two videos here um, that I'm doing of Chilling Rains. They're going to be my favorite decks, my favorite archetypes from the set. Uh, Metagross, uh, in my opinion, is super cool. Again, it might not be the most playable deck. Same with Sandaconda. Um, so for that reason, after this, the next day, we're going to cover both of the Cali Rex uh, Ice Rider and Shadow Rider decks because those, in my opinion, are probably going to be the most viable of the decks. Uh, so, you know, everyone's kind of hoping to see those lists. So, you know, hopefully, you know, I don't disappoint and, and you know, those can be uh, also pretty interesting videos. And then after that, there's some other stuff onwards to cover. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, that's kind of the big, those are the big, you know, things for, for the uh, relevant archetypes, I, I would think. Okay. This is very interesting hand. Um, Attaching would be good, but again, attaching like for turn isn't super important. He's not even going to attack us next turn. Uh, so we kind of just have to keep that in mind, I think. Um, what I'm going to do though, yeah, so mm, I'm just thinking. Um, I'm thinking. I don't want to bring up the Zacian. It's somewhat likely um, that he could just go ahead and attack with it. Um, although that could be a good option. Probably not the best option. We're not going to boss this turn. Um, so we're, first of all, yeah, we're going to level ball. And I think what we need to do is just go ahead and grab our Sobbles. Um, we want to get a couple of these guys on our board, actually. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're just going to do that. Um, let's look through the deck. So we have two VMAXs in here. Um, we have one one more boss left, Cheryl. Okay, so we, we actually prized a Marnie and a Research, I believe, which could be difficult for us. Um, I was thinking, I was debating... Um, you know, discarding the hand and just and just playing research this turn. We could because we have two Drizziles, um, and we have our Intellions there. So uh, we definitely could do that. Um, is it the best option? You know what? I don't know. Uh, but I kind of want to play aggressive, and I want to get a nice board state kind of set up uh, this turn. So that's what I'm kind of going to do, actually, is I'm just going to go ahead, grab a second Sanaconda, and we are going to pitch this hand. Um, and we're going to discard those two cards, which could be pretty useful in the long run. Um, and we have capture energy as well. Okay, so this hand is in, it's interesting. Um, we don't actually have anything like progressive in our hand though, which is pretty uh, disappointing, um, all things considered. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna attach a capture to, uh, we're just gonna put on the active Sandaconda. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else that would be really good to put on our bench. Um, I suppose Galarian Zapdos V could be good, uh, but he's not gonna bench that many V Pokemon uh, realistically. Uh, it's, I mean, it's, it's an option. I mean, we could go Galarian Zapdos, um, but I don't know if maybe just going another Santa Conda would be better. I'm trying to think. Uh, the bench space isn't actually super relevant, um, and I'm kind of thinking Santa Conda might just be our best bet. Um, actually, let's go Zapdos. Why not? <laughs> In this matchup, I don't think it actually matters a whole lot. Uh, so now uh, we are just going to pass. Unfortunately, our hand isn't the greatest. Um, if it was just uh, one, if, it, if we drew into a fighting energy, it might have been even better because then we could have actually attacked with a sand pulse next turn. Um, we drew into Inteleon Shady Dealings, but we did not draw into a Drizzile. Uh, Drizzile is, of course, you know, the, the Inteleon Shady Dealings. That's going to be our, kind of our main draw engine, aside from the fact that we are running draw supporters and whatnot, but we're not running Crobats or Dedenes, which is uh, somewhat of an upside to this deck, um, but uh, also at the same time, uh, perhaps a downside. Uh, typically, I probably wouldn't have played the Zapdos V, but I know I'm going to just, uh, okay. So, again, that's not a huge deal for us. It does not, it doesn't actually do much, uh, you know, in the grand scheme of things, uh, that Mawile. Uh, he, he, if he had KOs us with Zacian this turn, that would be pretty unfortunate. Um, definitely, that would put us in a tough spot to where we have to really protect uh, our Sandaconda V Max. Uh, but he's going to alter Creation GX, and I think that's just his best move anyway. We're going to top deck here. Let's see what we draw. Uh, it's a Sandaconda V, so uh, very unfortunate for us uh, to draw here this turn, whiffing the energies. Uh, we have plenty of ways to draw cards in this deck. We just haven't seemed to find any of them. Uh, so I think what we're going to have to do is let's just quick ball away this Sandaconda. We can grab uh, this Sobble here. Um, and unfortunately, we're just going to have to pass the turn. There's not much that we can really do, uh, unfortunately. Um, but... Um, you know, we're just like one card away from, from having a, a, you know, a good hand uh, to work with. So we'll see if we can get that going. We'll see. Uh, definitely an unfortunate hand for us, but um, we'll see. You know, I mean, it's sometimes, sometimes it just happens like that. If he hits us for 180 here, uh, obviously not super ideal, uh, but, you know, might not be the end of the world either. 
Uh, we'll see what we top deck. But uh, yeah, definitely not super good for us. Um, kind of just being stuck in the active is, is just not going to be very good. Okay, see, we top deck here. It's an Evo Incense, so that is something, at least. Um, now I think what we have to do is we're going to have to grab a Drizzile. We can evolve one of our uh, Sobbles here. And I think what we have to do is just grab, like, a Research, to be honest with you. Um, we could try to boss stall him. But his, all of his other Pokemon have retreat costs of one. Um, he's got eight energies on board. Uh, he's down one switch, one escape rope. That could be uh, somewhat of a viable option, but then we just have nothing to do next turn. So I think what we have to do, actually, um, is research away the hand. But uh, we only have one other Inteleon in our deck, so I think that Marnie here is actually going to be the better option. So we're just going to go ahead and Marnie. Um, we're going to hope that we draw into something off this Marnie. Um, and, uh, okay. So, uh, not great for us, uh, really. Uh, but um, at least we can do something, I guess. Uh, we can sand pulse here, and we can start spreading that damage out. Um, but uh, yeah, so once he kind of KOs us, uh, it, you know we're in a, it's, we're going to be in a pretty tricky situation, uh, one hundred percent. Telescopic sight that you know that attack there that turn would have been actually really good for us. Uh, but unfortunately, um, you know the stone energy came a turn late, uh, just kind of one or two pieces away from uh, you know, being in a, in a much better position against this ADP Zacian. So he's going to go ahead and just KO us. And now he's just one boss's orders away from winning the game. He's also taking four prize cards here. So it's extremely unlikely uh, that, of course, he doesn't get it. And that would be, uh, you know, that wouldn't be very, very good for us, I think. That would not be very good. Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's extremely unlikely that he uh, doesn't get it here, <laughs> at least in the next turn or two. But we'll see. Uh, we top deck telescopic sight, so I guess that's cool. Again, just one turn too late, uh, unfortunately. Um, but, uh, you know, not much you can really do about it. Uh, again, we probably have to just Marty here. We probably have to Marty and hope that he does not draw, uh, oh, you know, the uh, the boss's orders card. Uh, that would be pretty uh, That would be pretty good if, if we could miss that, I think. Uh, but anyway, yeah, we're kind of stuck in a position where we have to just go ahead and sand pulse. Uh, we're spreading damage nicely. If we could have set this up you know a turn or two earlier would have been very good uh would have been ideal yeah he's gonna hit us with the ultimate ray you know i mean i can't fault him for it at all that's for sure um okay so we actually have find the drizzile which is interesting uh so now i think our only play actually though is uh is going to grab is going to be to grab the cheryl i think i think this is actually the only play that we can make um, and hope that he still does not have boss's orders he's also bench locked uh so he does not actually have a way to draw more cards which is good for us uh so we're just gonna go ahead, pop, go ahead pop the cheryl discards the stone energy but we can just attach another one um now if we could top deck like inteleon uh that would be super nice or, or just a way to grab inteleon uh, i'm gonna spin her just right off the gate so we have one inteleon here we have one evo incense uh other than that um not much for us to really draw into that could be really good a boss could be nice i guess uh but uh yeah <coughs> excuse me I actually am going to quick ball away Guzmahela, and uh, we can just grab this this Sobble here, and um, I'm going to bench that in case we draw a scoop up net, you know, so I guess that's probably our best play, um, and yeah, we're going to have to sand pulse, and we just hope, we just hope that he does not have boss's orders, if he does, uh, that is not going to be very good for us at all, uh, but if he doesn't, we're kind of in a pretty good situation, uh, here comes the ultimate ray, okay, so now we're just going to see we top deck, so he missed boss's orders. Uh, again, which was extremely lucky for us. Uh, and we top deck Evolution Incense. Wow. Okay. This is uh, this is spicy, everybody. Very spicy. So I think what we can do is if we grab... Um, actually, I think we win both ways. So let me just check. So uh, we're doing 50 to the bench. Um, that's actually not enough, uh, unfortunately, to, um, to KO. I'm just trying to think. So we have to do 100 to this guy. Yeah, it's just it's just not actually possible. Uh, the other Inteleon, we could have taken four prize cards here, but we just wouldn't be doing enough damage, uh, I think. Um, but uh, I guess what we can do is just hope that he doesn't have boss's orders uh, yet again. Uh, that's really the only our only uh, hope at this point. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and play the Shady, uh, shady Dealings Inteleon. Uh, yeah, we're going to search a deck for two trainer cards. We can grab actually Cheryl this time. Um, and, uh, I think what we're gonna do is stamp him. 
Uh, just to increase his odds here, increase our odds, I, I think is going to be our best option. So, um, yeah. All right. I mean, we're going to do it. We're going to hope it works. We're going to hope it sticks. Uh, we're going to pop the Cheryl, heal all damage from our Sandaconda. Uh, we can attach the energy here, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to stamp him to two. Uh, and we're going to hope that... Um, we're going to hope it sticks. We're going to hope that, that stamp sticks. Uh, he whiffed the top deck the last few turns, uh, which was good for us. Uh, but, uh, oh, wait. Oh, I miscounted on the Mawile. I miscounted on the Mawile. We could have just won last turn with the other Inteleon. I totally forgot. Uh, <laughs> I don't know why I did that. Um, this Inteleon, so put two damage counters under one of your opponent's Pokemon. Okay, so we actually wouldn't have won. Uh, but it looks like he whiffed boss this turn, which is definitely really good for us. So uh, we end up uh, winning you know, this turn. So there we go. Uh, you love to see it. Uh, you absolutely love to see it. I'm going to BM Bond because he's kind of a silly goose. And I just kind of want that to happen. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and do that. <laughs> uh, we're just messing with him at this point. We're just absolutely messing with him. Uh, we're going to go ahead and just, just take some prize cards in the middle of the turn. Uh, but yeah, uh, very cool. Sand pulls. Uh, we got a little bit lucky there. It was a slow start. Uh, he had a much uh, faster start than I did. Uh, but look at that. We're just taking like 10 prize cards in one turn. So you got to love Sandaconda. Um, really, it, you know, ADP is a really fast deck. It likes to set up quickly and quickly end games. So not a great matchup against our four Sandaconda really at all. But if you're playing against a deck that is also kind of a setup deck, likes to go a little bit slower, Sandicon is phenomenal. It really is, in my opinion, uh, one of the best uh, spread decks in our game right now, if not the best spread deck. You know, however, Mew is so popular in our format right now. I just think that this isn't a super viable option to try to win as many games as possible, perhaps in a tournament. Uh, but in some matchups, uh, in some matchups specifically, uh, you're going to absolutely dominate. Um, and that's what Sandaconda is really, really, really good for. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I've been Maddie from Chill TCG. Uh, tomorrow we're going to be covering both Calyrex, uh, uh, VMAX cards, Ice Rider, and Shadow Rider. So I'm super, super excited for that. Um, but uh, yeah, don't forget to play in Chill Series on Wednesday. Uh, it's going to be absolutely phenomenal. Um, but also, guys, the GG Tour Chill TCG Cup uh, is coming up this weekend. So this Saturday and Sunday, it's uh, free entry, $500 in the prize pool. So take a, you know, be on the lookout for that. I'm uh, going to be super exciting. I really cannot wait. Uh, but anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe. I'm Maddie from Chill TCG. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good one.